Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome to this video about different LED strips and what to know about them before buying. Um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Joshua and I'm a starting artist in Barcelona and this is the little workspace that I got here. If you're into DIY, anything about LEDs, epoxy or even much more because there is much more coming, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe, leave a comment if you feel like. And to the other people, I must say like a big thank you. I just reached the 100 subscriber mark and that is very inspiring to me. So therefore today I'm going to try to record a few different videos. But this one is really about LED strips, their technical specifications. And as you can see, I've already worked with a few. There's a cube there, there's uh, USB ones there, 12 volt ones up there. And I'll try to go over as much as I can the ones that I used in the past and what are my recommendations for you guys. Okay, so let's jump into the video. So yeah, before we get into all those little details, the thing that you have to understand before buying LED strips is that like there are basically only three types of them. Um, that means that like type number one is a static LED strip means just you plug it in and it has one color and you cannot change the color. Uh, mostly used is white, for example, in kitchens and uh, living rooms, etc. Uh, the second type is that your entire LED strip can change color. It has effects. You can use a Bluetooth controller for like music responsive effects. And that already makes it much more nice. And then the last option is option number three, which is individually addressable LEDs. For me, to my opinion, those are the coolest to use, those are the best to use. And just for a little bit more money, you get a lot of different options in controlling them, apps and remotes and so on. Also, the other things that I mentioned in this video, for example, voltage, voltage drop, it also applies to those strips. Um, now, the only thing also to know before choosing strips that can change color, like what is the difference between RGB strips and RGBW strips? There's only just one difference. Um, the RGB ones, they have each their three channels to display the three colors, RGB, which means red, green and blue. But an RGBW strip has a dedicated LED, an extra LED dedicated to the white channel. So if you're looking for an LED strip that can change color, but your priority is still to have a nice white mood light for a kitchen, a bedroom, whatever, then I would go for an RGBW strip, just because of the extra dedicated white channel. I'm going to use this package as an example and also some screenshots to put in some extra information for you guys to give a better understanding about these LED strips. And one of the first things to mention is the length of the reel. Of course, it depends up to you what your project is or what you have in mind, where to install them. But always keep your voltage drop in mind, especially yeah, with 5 volt strips, I would have to say every 2 meters, 2.5 two meters, you need a power injection, which means an extra power cable going to your positive to make sure your LEDs stay bright after a certain length. And it is the same for 12 volts, but there I would mention like maybe after 5 meters, you need a power injection just because of voltage drop problems. Then the next thing to mention is your chip control. As you can see on this package, it is WS2811. And on the other package, you can clearly say it says WS2815. Um, these both are individually addressable LED strips, but the difference between these chips is the 2815. Every LED can change color. With the WS2811, it is every three LEDs. Um, again, my own recommendation is WS2815. It doesn't have to be from this brand specifically, um, but these type of LEDs make it possible that every single one changes color also in a very smooth way. And the most best thing about it, they have a backup channel. Now that's something very technical, uh, maybe that's something for another video. Um, but this means that if one LED breaks or gets interrupted somewhere, that all the rest is still going to work. That's not the case with many other LED strips. So maybe that's something to take in mind. So yeah, then the next two things on our package are the wattage and the voltage. But again, yeah, I've mentioned this before and I'll also put in an extra screenshot for you to make it easier for you to calculate how many watts exactly your LED strip uses when you need to cut them at a certain distance. The next thing is the angle. 
Um, so yeah, the next thing to mention on our package is the IP norm. That is actually the waterproofing norm. Again, I'll put in an extra screenshot for you guys to understand this a bit more because yeah, it's again, I need to make sure this video doesn't get too long as well. Um, but the ones in the picture here are IP20. They, they have no waterproofing at all. And the ones that I use mostly are IP65. That is a waterproofing silicone covering, um, which it does make a difference depending on where you install them, of course. So the next thing on our package, and probably the most confusing thing for most people, uh, says CHIPS 300 times SMD 5050. This is not to be mixed up with the control chip. This is actually basically the type of LED. So in this case, it means we have a 5 meter reel of 300 times SMD 5050 LEDs that are controlled with WS2811 chips. Then the next thing on our package, it says with 10 millimeters. Now, yeah, there's not much to talk about this. There are a few different standard sizes. I always use 10 millimeters. I see people using five millimeters for very small detailed builds. Um, I think most of you guys are gonna go for 10 millimeters. It's the easiest to install to find aluminum railing for your ceiling, for your kitchen, or for what, wherever you want to install it. Um, so yeah, I'll jump over to the next thing. So the last thing is the cut distance. This basically says, as you can see here in the video, Every 50 millimeters, you have an exposed copper strip and a cutting line. Uh, this makes it very easy to, yeah, make your strips cut to size or to reattach to put in a power injection when you have voltage drop problems or just to put on extra cables, uh, connectors uh, to make it easy to install them in whatever project you have in mind. Now I'll switch over to connecting the LEDs. There are many different ways in connecting them. I'm a big fan of soldering, but if you don't have the equipment to solder, I'll just show you a few different ways to connecting. So yeah, the first ones that I'll show you are these USB ones. Uh, these are five volts. These are very easy to install just with a simple USB connector. This comes into the package. You plug this in to your USB port and here you just plug in the strip itself. Now, I cannot recommend these connectors, these come loose very easily. This is basically the beginning of the strip, just these four pins going in. And yeah, just for some home setting, from the moment you hit the cable or from the moment you hit the strip or the controller, the thing just come loose by itself. And that's why I'm just a huge fan of soldering. As you can see here, soldered connections, they don't come apart very easy and they're very secure connections, especially when you use heat shrinking tubing. But again, yeah, in this video, I'll show some simple ways of connecting them with using things like this, uh, which makes it easy to install, and also things like this to make them a little bit easier to install when you don't have any knowledge about soldering, but you still want to install some LED strips. So yeah, these are the 5 volt ones that I have in my workshop. It's about 2 meters, I would assume. And um, yeah, I use them here just because I had them left over. All the LED rails are recycled, by the way, all the wood as well. Um, and yeah, basically, again, my own recommendation is go for 12 volts because of voltage drop problems. Also, these don't work with an app. It's a very basic controller that you can see here, just very basic. It's very easy to lose. And I always tend to go for... Um, Bluetooth controlled, uh, app controlled LEDs, which makes it just more easy to work with for the customer and for you as well. So the first 12 volt ones to mention in this video are these. Um, these are basically the most simple RGB uh, color changing strips with 60 LEDs per meter. You can also see again where you can cut these. These have waterproofing covering over them, but that doesn't really matter now for the further explanation. Um, these do work with an app, these also work with a controller, uh, but these are not individually addressable. You can see these like just right above my head there on one of the fade effects now, uh, changing to seven colors. It's not very easy to film. These are already really good LEDs, I'm quite happy with them. But I did switch over to individually addressable ones just because it's a little bit more expensive, but the amount of effects that you can have with individually addressable LEDs is just much better. But it is again the same case. Um, I don't understand why all these manufacturers use these super simple connectors. 
it, it's not safe. Again, these things also come loose very easily. Also, for all the extension cables, I have a whole bunch of them. You can find a whole array of these things, extension cables for different lengths, for example, this one. Um, but again, I'll show you, it is the same way also to use these things to connect them. So the next one to mention are the ones that I use the packaging for as an example to show you the technical data. So these are the ones that are individually addressable per three LEDs. It's, it's amazingly difficult to film. I really have such a terrible camera on my phone to film these things. Um, but here you can really clearly see the effect on what is the difference between individually addressable and non-individually addressable. Um, these work with a separate controller. This is the SP107E. These come with cables. Also, the strip itself came with very solid connectors, uh, which I really, really can advise. Again, just for the effects alone with this controller, you have 180 effects, and the thing also works on music. And so yeah, the last ones that I can show you guys how they exactly work, I've already mentioned them before, my absolute favorite ones, the WS2815s, 12 volts again, um, 5 meter reels I always buy with IP65 waterproofing, which means this silicone covering, and again, these come with excellent connectors, uh, the nice solid click connectors that just don't come loose by themselves. And the way these work, it is the same as the previous ones I use exactly the same controller the sp 107 e and yeah so this is basically how they work this is one of my cubes and you can clearly see how fluent and how nice the effects work on these by the way if you want to make one of these cubes this is the exact same one from the diy video so yeah make sure to go check that out make sure to go check out my soldering video if you want to get started on soldering and um, yeah, I think that is about it. I'll show you a few things now to connect these LED strips without soldering for the people who really don't want to get into the soldering. And yeah, I think then that's about it. And so, as I've mentioned before, I was also going to show you guys how to connect uh, your LED strips without soldering with the use of parts like these. Now, it's always the same principle. It's basically just your strip has these um, cutting places those are always determined you can see those very clearly sometimes they even put a little scissors on it but usually it's just a line you can see the copper strips you can always cut them there and you just need to slide these into place and then your next strip also slides into place there now these have a waterproof covering so you just gently need to remove this now you just have to take a little bit of time it's a little bit of wiggling getting the first piece loose then just kind of rolling this back a little bit, getting your good pliers, just cutting this off. There you go. And then this is ready to slide into your connector. Now it doesn't really matter which one I'm going to use probably. So I'll just take the simple one. And again, yeah, it's a little bit uh, of a gentle thing to do. Really take your time for this because uh, it is sometimes a pain in the butt to get these into place. Uh, there you go. First part's in, and voila, see? Then you just slide in your next piece. I'll prepare that piece and slide it in for you guys. That sounded a bit weird, but hey, let's put it in the video anyway. And so yeah, here we have our first part. It slid into place. This is the second part. Always make sure, so here is an arrow. This, this is not on every strip, but just make sure to know where your positive is. As you can see, this is very simple. It's a strip with arrows, but again, the positive is on top here. The positive is on top there. So again, just nice and gently sliding this into place. There you go. Perfect. Then the last thing you have to do is just close these connectors off. And there you go. That's a connected strip and as you can see I'm not going to turn this one on because it's practically not worth showing you but yeah I've did the same thing here in this corner where just to make the corner it's not done in the most proper way um, but again if it's on a TV you can use these parts if it's just to go straight ahead or if you need to make a bump or a strange corner you can use parts like this there are many many different types of these things I'll put a few in the description 
Um, and I think that's almost it for this video. I'll have a look and you'll see in the next clip if I still have something else to say. So yeah guys, that was about it for this video. I hope it was clear for you and I hope I mentioned all the things that you were looking for in this video. If you have a question or if there is something that I didn't mention, please ask me in the comments. Um, if you like what you saw, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. There is much more coming. And again, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.